Hello everyone, my name is Viktor Öhman, and in this breakdown I'll be showing you how I recreated Counter-Strike's iconic map Dust 2 with a hyper-realistic twist. I wanted to explore how one of the world's most popular games could look if it was remade by leveraging the most cutting-edge technologies that exist today. I'll break down the most useful techniques that I used to create this scene, with some fun and highly creative workflows in every step of the process. And if you want to learn more about this project, you should join us on the 12th of this month at 7pm CET for an in-depth livestream where I'll be answering any questions you may have about this scene. So check the description for more details and let's jump straight into the breakdown. To start off, I went back into Counter-Strike and played the game to get a better sense of space in the scene. And as a fun test, I then captured a whole bunch of screenshots and fed them into a photogrammetry software, which basically let me create a simple 3D scan using the different angles. Now, there are probably more clever ways to go about this, but I just wanted to have a bit of fun, and this really helped me get a sense of scale and proportions. I then used this as a reference to quickly model the basic shapes of the map, mostly using simple primitives. I wanted to stay as true as possible to the original shapes, but then really give the set dressing and texturing my own spin. Now all I needed to do was export my blockout scene into Unreal Engine and get things going. So here we are in Unreal and the scene mostly consists of basic objects with no textures. And for this video we're gonna focus on the center structure or the main square, which I'll be using to demonstrate how I went about detailing most of the scene. The mesh itself is extremely simple with very basic geometry and UVs. The next step here was to apply a plaster material on this mesh, and to achieve this I relied on real-world scan data from the Megascans library. Because we're using a huge amount of assets for this scene, importing them would have been extremely boring and time-consuming. To get through this I used Quixel Bridge, which allowed me to export my assets to Unreal Engine with just one click. As you can see, my plaster surface is automatically imported with all the textures and a material, which I can then drag and drop on my wall all without ever leaving the zone. Now I'm gonna go back to Bridge and I'll export this wood board's 3D asset. This asset consists of multiple different wood planks, so all I needed to do was randomly pick one of them from the content browser, then move, rotate and scale them around my structure. I make sure to use several of the different planks as well as to rotate them around to maximize the variation I get from them to avoid repetition. I'll speed up this process a little bit. I'll also add a couple of planks around the door to create a really old and worn door frame. Once the planks are placed where I want them, I drag and drop this material from the content browser on top of my door, which was a fairly simple box, but now it looks like a realistic door that really helps sell our overall composition. I'm also adding a couple of these low stone walls on top of this structure to help give it a nice detailed sort of crowning. All the assets I'm using in this scene have been imported with one click using Bridge and the UE4 live link. Once I'm happy with these wall assets, let's move on to talk about trim sheets, what they are and how to create them. Now I'm just gonna add a very basic mesh around the corner here, and so far it's just a basic mesh, but we'll create a custom trim sheet using Quixel Mixer to have a nice set of bricks to apply to it. Trim sheets are basically tileable textures, which you can apply to your models to create crownings, panels, damage, and so on to specific parts of your model. My layer stack in the mixer was fairly simple for this one, and I used the black color in the top layer as shown here as an opacity mask in Unreal. This project used more advanced trim sheets as well, such as this one, and I'll be covering its creation process in the upcoming livestream, from creating the texture in the mixer to the geometry and UVs in Maya. Now back to our original trim sheet. Instead of manually exporting it to Unreal, I just went to File, Export to Library, and from there my asset was now available in the bridge as well. Now if I drag and drop my trim sheet material from the content browser to my mesh, you'll notice that it instantly looks much more realistic and detailed, and the overall structure feels much more believable as well. The next step for these walls was to add another layer of details to them, and just like with any other assets, the process was simple. Find the asset in the Megascans library through Bridge, click Export and start moving it around. These decals really make a huge difference in the final result and were leveraged all over this scene. Let's 
do some quick set dressing for the road as well, using an asphalt material I made in Mixer, by combining a number of asphalt, concrete and dirt materials from Megascans. And before moving on to the next part of the video, I'll just go ahead and add some curb meshes to the scene as well. I'll speed this part up, but I'm using the same technique as I did for the wood framing on the structure. By adding some slight irregularities to the rotation and scale, and by using different orientations of the meshes, you can really maximize their use, and really create a believable appearance. So instead of relying entirely on decals for detailing the road, I opted to use vertex painting as well, which basically allows me to paint different variations of the asphalt, creating a road that doesn't look repetitive. I created both variations of the asphalt with a mixer, and then just as usual I sent them to bridge and then to unreal. The vertex blend setup I'm using for this road was also automatically generated for me from the bridge. I wanted to break up the road even more, and to do that I scattered a bunch of 3D plans around my structure and the road as well. And just like with everything else from the bridge, the foliage is completely set up for you with wind animation, materials and so on. I then imported a set of pebbles, which were also scattered using the same technique, and they added a lot of value to the road. Before we wrap up our structure, I quickly wanted to go over this mix. My colleague James Lucas created the base texture for me, and then I created a very simple mesh that represented the overall shape of a crate. I'll go over the creation of this mix in an upcoming livestream. Once I had the crate in Unreal, I also imported a wooden pallet and put my crate on top of it. These two assets were then moved just around here, and they blended really nicely with our detailed structure as well. Finally, I started set dressing my scene by populating it with a bunch of different assets such as barrels, concrete barriers, cables, and so on. And at this point, it's pretty much like playing with incredibly realistic pieces of Lego. The rest of the scene received the same treatment as this structure, and I then progressively tackled each building, reused many different 3D assets, trim sheets and materials. Add to that some dust and basic post-processing, and you end up with a fully playable Dust 2 map that runs smoothly on a modern day computer. What you're seeing here is a time lapse of the creation of this particular angle of the scene. I hope you had a great experience watching this video, and don't forget to tune in on the 12th at 7pm CET for an even more in-depth walkthrough. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.